oh boy. All right, so Ian. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Washington Capitals on Tuesday, which is I think what day it is. Yeah. Thank goodness. Uh, the Washington Capitals officially announced the hiring of Peter Laviolette, most recently of the Nashville Predators, but also formerly of uh, what he played. He coached for the Isles and he coached for the um, Flyers, uh, the Flyers and the uh, the Stanley Cup winning Carolina Hurricanes. Hurricanes. Right after the 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 big lockout. So uh, we chimed in. We were on the uh, the zoom chat uh when the real reporters got to talk to uh lavis today what did you think of the the press conference i was very bored <laughs> i uh i don't know it, it was just a lot of platitudes and you know stuff i like you know usually i'm listening for things to write about and i was just like wow this is just a lot of words um that you know, didn't have really much meaning beyond, you know, um, you know, I think he's experienced. It's everything that we thought they were going to get in the coach experience motivator. Um, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't take much from it except for like maybe the last part about Holtby. You know? Now, is that a judgment of Peter Laviolette or is that a judgment of just the way hockey press goes? Yeah. Hockey press. Goes, um, definitely. where's Enrique Iglesias? Wasn't he supposed to be in the background? Um, I, long story short, I put Enrique and Steve Dangle by the by the uh, slide in door to scare. Oh, people. that's good. I like that. Just, just for just for just for a week. I don't know. I changed it up. Uh, if like the deer in your backyard gets scared by it, that's that's fine yeah. Too. Um, <laughs> so we'll, of the of the three options that we we consider to be, I don't know, we'll, we'll call them like candidates, if not finalists for the job. Right there was. My mind, mine's just a total blank, but obviously Peter Laviolette, the eventual winner. Mike Babcock, most recently of the Leafs, then formerly of uh, Detroit Red Wings and obviously Team Canada. And then the third option would be Gerard Gallant, who was with the Panthers and then with the Golden Knights. Um, of those three options, it seems like they went for like the, the middle road, the safe bet, the conventional one. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, I, I felt very meh. About the process, minus like you, I had strong feelings. You literally about tweeted that meh. Talk. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, none of these guys excite so, me. So well, now it's time for us to like turn our cards over, which is that I don't think that they were ever serious about Mike Babcock for like a billion reasons. Um, one, I guess, I guess like the reason why you talk to Mike Babcock is like twofold. One, you're doing uh, homage, you're paying homage to like a, like a, a an institution of um, North American hockey. Like if you're going to interview for a job, you better include Mike Babcock. If you're trying to fill a head coaching job, but two, it's like a trial balloon. It's like, Hey, uh, you guys want this guy? It's like, um, on a TV show where like they'll, they'll write like a really vulgar joke. Uh, and then, uh, they'll get that joke cut by the censor. So they get the joke they really wanted in. And ultimately they wanted Lavulette all along. That may be true. I, I was told that, uh, Babcock was the other finalist behind uh, Laviolette and that Gallant was kind of the third tier because the teams that he coached for um, after he left did good so it wasn't necessarily his influence uh, that was the thinking there um, I was disturbed but that they even brought him into the mix because um, there's like just so many you know there's like a Bruce Boudreau there's a there's a dancing Dan Biosma you know you know, I, I, they're just other people. And so, like, it just didn't make any sense to me why he came into the mix. And, um, you know, in the past, I wasn't really so bothered by the same 30, 40 old guy candidates. But, like, for whatever reason, this time around, it just it just feels like, I don't know. Like, I thought Todd was a pretty good coach. Uh, I know people are out for blood for him. Um, and I, I don't know. Like I said, it's just like, I'm not feeling super excited. That, I, he might be great. He might be great. And I'm totally just being a big poopy head. But um, yeah, that's just how I feel right now. It's, I think that's totally fine. Everyone's allowed to feel however you need to, especially like everyone's got COVID brain to some extent. Right. And like yeah. seeing the Capitals play as bad as you possibly can in, in the, uh, the playoffs, the postseason. Um, like, you know, even though the, the blues and the the penguins didn't even make 
you know, make it through the element, the qualifying round. I still think yeah, the capital somehow yeah. did worse than they did. Uh, I mean, even though they technically had a buy through like, the round robin anyway, like um, obviously the capitals needed to make some change. I think we all sort of like took that for granted, you know, whether that was wise or not. I think like it was just sort of unavoidable at the point they were at. Uh, and once I started thinking about like, obviously I'm doing like the player season recaps right now. And like this week is Friday is Kuznetsov day. Uh, John Carlson was like day two or day three of the whole thing. Um, those are two players that are on, on the, on the roster for a long time, uh, and are all getting what between like, I guess Kuznetsov's like 7.8 and, uh, Carlson's eight, something like that. They're, they're yeah. earning a big chunk of money. They're both talented players. Um, but they both have defensive problems right now. And if the caps need anything, I think it's, um, uh, like defensive and neutrals neutral zone transition play structure um i think that that's what they're probably suffering from most uh like evidence for that would be like on the fourth line like the uh hathaway dowled ponic line uh when that line's like working correctly they actually are doing that stuff and like they are getting some time they're just not goal scorers um so like i could totally see them saying if we don't do something about kuznetsov this is gonna be a disaster and even though carlson you know is effectively a Norris winner. Like, uh, you know, they, I, we, they know that, that, that wasn't a great season by Carlson aside from like the, the monster points he put up. So like, I can totally see this as like a purpose from like a, like an on ice tactics, excess nose standpoint. I can totally see it. And then I guess the other part of it's like personality based and Laviolette is like, he's a tough boy without being as tough as Babcock is. And by tough, I mean abusive. Um, do you want to, do you have anything to say or would you like to go to the videotape? Um, yeah, I, well, I, I agree with you. I think, I think there needs to be some structure. I think a lot of people might be surprised. Like, I feel like they might have some, some growing pains next year during the regular season, but I have a feeling this is going to be a thing solely for the playoffs where, uh, the structure that the caps play with is, is going to be better suited for the postseason And, when the Caps did win in 2018 with Barry, they switched the system in February, you know, late March, early April. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was actually well it was later than that. What I was told it was like March. Yeah, it was it was before the Penguins game on national TV, whenever that was. Um, and they went to a more uh, defensive system, and they really responded to that. So it may not win them as many games in the regular season, and, and regular season games may be more hard the way they play. But you know, it might be something that pays dividends more in the playoffs for this team, and so. Um, that's where my optimism is rooted in. Um, but again, I just, I, I don't think what we saw in the playoffs was coaching a hundred percent and it might be, it may, it, it sure as hell might be the structure and the system, which I can't really speak to, you know, cause we're not super familiar with all the X's and O's and what guys should be doing, but it just looked like most of the team, you know, I, I said this before is that, you know, when I was watching the scrimmage, um, at MedStar, and the Hershey guys were taking it to the best players on the team, like Oshi and Verana and Ovi and Backstrom. I was really concerned. It just, it just didn't look like they were in it. And uh, I don't know what, I don't know what that it was and what it meant, but um, it just something seemed off about this team. And I, I'm just, you know, people, I think they're scapegoating uh, Todd a lot, but I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what, what happens next year. And it's going to be a strange year and, and a veteran guy, you know, will probably help with that. So be, uh, before we like switch gears a little bit, uh, I think about the uh, like motivation and like the scapegoating thing. And uh, I also think about Alex Ovechkin, right? Cause the, the only other thing that we haven't talked about, about Peter Laviolette is that um, like, if you were to look at Michael Blake McCurdy of, uh, of hockey viz and his like culture uh, coaching impact uh, uh, model, I think it's called Magnus. Uh, it, it indicates like a reliable depression of offense uh, from from Lavulette. And um, if I were like a uh, a former player who uh, goes on the radio and shoots my mouth off, I would say, well, that's just because he didn't have the same shooting talent uh, that he would have in Washington. But of course, that's not the way the model works. It's it's you know the same players before and after that coach, which is how they measure it. So uh, eat that Alan may the, 
But but like the thing we do need to think about is like what does this mean for Alex Ovechkin and his chase of Gretzky's record? Um, if yeah. if this does mean that Ovi's going to score ten percent fewer goals, that's the ball game. Uh, so uh, something to keep in mind. Also, will they get a full full season? That's something outside of the uh, the the control of the yeah. coach. And uh, I think an eighty two game season right now is uh, absurd to think that they can pull that off since it's September fifteenth. Uh, so it's. Yeah, they're not going to play an eighty-two next next year. And, and without a, and they already have committed to not doing it in a bubble. So like, I don't know how it's going to work. Oh, they'll just do, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, are they going to try and do the major league baseball thing? We're like, oh, we're going to lose the cards for the month of June, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> um, but you can't fully understand Peter Laviolette until uh you let's put a great visualization. This is here. Um, oh, see, I've, I've I've just I called the best clips. Uh, so here we go. Chances that period was seven to one for the opposition. Real quick inter- interruption, though. Uh, if you're listening oh. to the Rush Machine podcast uh, with kids in the room, uh, there will be some salty language coming up right now. You know why, Hartsy? Because it's about as fucking casual as it gets. As casual as it gets. That's uh, uh, Hartnell. He was. 34 when this was filmed that's a veteran player right there in boston we said all right got nixon in the schedule let's turn the page somebody tell me what the fuck is the difference now the difference of the competence of cussing from peter laviolette to what i think of as like the foil standard of cursing bruce boudreau who like fumbles through it obviously this guy's a pro level stanley cup winning curser whereas boudreau's I don't know, maybe, maybe like a Jennings Trophy winner at cursing. He's got a, the, he's got a impostors. Yes, with the F. Sorry for blowing up my mic. There's Wayne. People rip their heart out of their fucking chest this period. Somebody says that to me. I do that thing that he just said about ripping the heart out. That's awesome. That's just a little snippet of of Lavulette. But I'm gonna switch gears. I don't want to stick to that too much. Sorry for the the, the notes there. Um. There is, I, this is something I also f- totally forgot about, which is that our boy Lavs was the originator With two minutes left in the period. Yep. of an important phrase. Oh, my camera's gone. Well, that's okay. Yager doesn't get the call when he goes down, closing in on for- Tell me what he did. We're just going to skip to the end of this. Okay, you ready? Montreal typical, a phrase originated by the the king here. Where where did my camera go? My camera crashed. Sorry. Let me just fix this bad boy real quick. Oh no, it's just me. No, no sorry. It's, it's, oh, there you are. Sorry about that. And I'll fix you real quick. Sorry, podcast podcast people. I will edit this out. You will not hear this. But video people, you're gonna have to deal with this momentary glitch. I'm sorry. And nope, I goofed it up. Oh God, it got goofed up again. That's okay. We'll just have it look uh, dorky. <laughs> like you're like dinky small. Oh Sorry, God. buddy. It's your it's your internet's fault probably. Uh, well, you know what? Well, why don't we stick to uh, where everything was going okay back on the uh, the second screen here? Um, oh well, now I can't even see you there. Okay, uh, that is uh, our boy Labs originating the phrase uh, Montreal typical. Some people say typical Montreal. We we try to go Montreal typical because of the French Canadian uh, relationship of uh, adjective to noun. Uh, I think that this is going to be fun for content reasons. Like Todd is not the guy to have a total uh, fit behind the the bench, uh, but it seems like our boy Lavs is, and that sounds like it's going to be a blast. Don't you think? Yeah. Oh my God! You're you're yeah. I'm looking forward to it. You're poor. Poor baby, like your poor camera is just all over the place here. There we go. And we're gorgeous again. There we go. Yeah, so I'm I'm pretty juiced about that. There's also a video of him um, playing with his dog, uh, who I suspect by now has passed away because it was born in, they, they rescued it in 2006, and his name was Stanley, and he was small to fit in the cup, but that was 14 years ago. So even for a good dog, uh, that's, uh, that's a long time. That's a long life and hard to, to stay around for the whole time. Um, your video is just an absolute disaster. We'll fix that another time. 
He's still, <laughs> he's still there. Yeah, okay. I'm still here. Uh, so uh, next on the the docket, I think would be uh, the topic of assistant coaches. Um, yeah. So somewhat suspiciously, like um, we haven't heard anything about the assistant coaches changing yet. Um, so we know that like when Todd Reardon was fired. They did not announce uh, the departure of like, uh, well, we knew Reed Cashman as the, like, the defensive coach was leaving, but Blaine Forsyth still in there. And who's the other guy? Oh, God. Oh, assistant yeah, I coach. Washington Capitals. Reed Cashman was one of them. Yeah. Uh, and we have we have. Uh, yeah. I'm going to pause it. Oh, okay, we're back. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's okay. Uh, all right, uh, back from technical difficulties. Ian, what is the deal with the assistant coaches situation? So McClellan left that up to uh, the new head coach. So um, Peter Lovely, that is going to be able to kind of decide and work with Brian on who he wants to hire to complete out his uh, bench. And uh, right now, it's it's kind of unclear which direction they want to go in. Um, I know McCarthy; he's been with Laviolette for a long time, so there's a lot of uh, interest uh, with possibly him joining the coaching staff. And uh, I know that he ran the power play and the defense. I, I think it was Nashville, and and their power play was yuck. Um, so uh, that's one guy that's getting a lot of buzz. Uh, but I, I think it's going to be a completely uh, random exercise like it's people are gonna get the, the remaining crew though uh stays so uh if i were brian mcclellan i'd be like uh i absolutely want like mccarthy not to come and i probably want you to keep uh blaine forsyth and if i am really yes and if i am uh peter laviolette i'm thinking uh, I want absolute autonomy over the assistant coaches because we've seen as recently as two years ago, that being a big point of like tension between the head coach and, and, and front office. Right. Uh, so it mm -hmm. seems like it, there's, uh, I don't know, it, some cross interest there, right? Like I would certainly think as much as people are sort of like down on the power play from this year, uh, I put some thoughts up on the Patreon a little while ago that like, I don't think, I think possibly it might've been overblown. Uh, and we we just didn't see enough out of the OV spot and it was probably downstream of uh, passing uh, or like neutral zone play. Uh, so if they really get like that, like if Blaine Forsyth can keep the what like the magic in the zone happening and they just fix some transition play, getting into the zone, getting like that Marcus Johansson stuff back, get rid of the slingshot. I think things will be all right. Um, I think they probably would want to keep Blaine Forsyth. And I'm not just saying that because I had I commissioned Rachel to do art of Blaine Forsyth. Um, which you haven't seen yet, but I'll, I'll share with you soon. It's really funny. It'll be a reference that won't make any damn sense to you, though. Um, I, okay. Uh, I was floating an idea. Uh, and I, I'm not sure if you liked it or saw it on Twitter or not, um, but it came up in the comments organically. So this didn't come from me originally, but then once I saw it, I said, this is the perfect idea. It's assisting coach Bruce Boudreaux. Uncle Boudreaux, zero responsibility, 100% cool uncle vibes. All the players are his nephews, and he's just there to hang out and have a good time and say, oh, shucks, you shouldn't do that. Boys will be boys, though. Go out there again. What do you think about assistant coach Bruce Pedro? Okay, let me let me set the picture for you. Lives in Hershey now. Didn't get a, yep. didn't get a head coach gig. Probably is going to get a head coach gig. Okay, maybe Toronto. They'll probably pay better. Probably more job security up there. But he's closer to home if, he, if he's in, in D.C. And uh, we love him. Uh, if he was not a finalist... And yet there was some kind of communication between uh, the Caps and him. I wonder exactly how interested Bruce Boudreau would be in rejoining the organization. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, I'd love it. I'd love it. If they, You know what? If they, It's kind of like when the Capitals won the Stanley Cup without Mike Green. It just didn't feel right. Yeah. And it's the same with Bruce Boudreau. You know, the best years uh, from Ovi, from Baxter, were with Bruce. And, you know, he's a part of their success, regardless of if he's with the team or not. It's the same with, like, 
George McPhee. The team that won in 2018 was like four fifths George McPhee. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I would love that. I, I would have loved if he came back because, like, honestly, and, and I know I know a lot of people might hate this, but, like, I'd be more interested in seeing Ovi get the goals record than, um, than them winning another Stanley Cup. That is you know, sacrilege. Because the Stanley Cup's kind of random. You didn't hear <laughs> that. Cup's, that didn't just happen. <laughs> the, the Stanley Cup's kind of random, and you got to get really lucky. And, you know, I, I know people think it's, no, you're More. you're absolutely right. The, the randomest thing, like uh, I, when you think about like Vegas, and I I said the same thing about the Avs getting eliminated and Vancouver getting eliminated. Like those are great teams. All three of those teams are awesome, and they should just do exactly what they did this year again because it's a crapshoot. You just put the best team you can together and go for it, and sometimes you will lose, and it'll be heartbreaking, like the 2009, 2010 Washington Capitals, maybe even the 2011 Capitals, definitely the 2017 Capitals, but sometimes you're a trash team, and you win, like the 2017 Penguins, like, they were not a great team, they still won, yep. like, you can, I guess the 2013 Bruins were basically just, like, the Tim Thomas team, like, you can, uh, well, they had Chara, and Bergeron, and Marchand was sucky then, so, yeah, there's there's complications everywhere, but hell yeah, I'm with you, I mean, what you said was, yeah absolutely outrageous and unacceptable but i i feel it on a deep down level I, maybe that's why i'm so meh about laviolette is because i know that there's going to be some offensive harm to this and i just you know 2018 is 2018 we'll always have it you know yeah. and it's not like i don't want to win a stanley cup but i mean if we can win a stanley cup and get the goals record i mean that would make me very excited you know i i don't know it's just like I don't think you'll ever see anyone get this close ever again, I, unless like goaltending rate. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, goal scoring rates change. Like, God, that'd be cool, which, yeah. which can happen. Yeah, you're you're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, um, or there could be some technology with hockey sticks that changes, and goalies don't catch up, and there's 12 goals a game, you know, and then and then it happens naturally. But like, I I just don't see this ever happening. They should again, just so. sedate all goalies before games like that. Like if they like, you really need to juice goal scoring. So like hit him with like a trank dart right when you drop the buzzer and just see what happens. <laughs> um, the last piece of news that came out of the uh, the press time was uh, not about the coach. It was about the Goldie. What's up with the Goldie? Yeah. So uh, Brian McClone said that uh, they're going to let Braden Holpe go to free agency, which which isn't technically a huge surprise. But it's kind of like one of those sentimental things where you're just like, Oh no, it's closer to a reality and you just don't want it to happen, but we're one step closer. Um, so it, it seems like Brian McClone is kind of hoping or maybe not hoping just like they're going to play, they're going to play it out and see, uh, what kind of deals Holpe gets offered. And if something makes sense for them, they're definitely going to play it out and, and try to get him back. But if that doesn't work, um, they're going to, it, it kind of seems like they're going to ride Samson off next year, regardless. Um, kind of reading into some of his comments that he made today. So that was, that was kind of sad. It was um, the, I, I kind of liked the, I like how like transparent he was. He's like, yeah, I hope he's going to just yeah. text us what, whatever offer she's getting and maybe we'll match them. Maybe not. Cause no one likes to move, especially if you're from freaking Saskatchewan. Um, the, Hopey really, I wrote about this in the recap, but like Hopey really is going into free agency at the worst possible time. Like yeah. pandemic made the cap flat. Uh, like he, Definitely played his worst season. The playoff performance was a total disaster. He gave them maybe two winnable games out of like the five. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's fair. Uh, you know, he he's one year after Bobrovsky got the you know ten billion dollars, whatever, in Florida that you know immediately got Dale. Well, eventually got Dale Tal Talon fired. Like everything was just a perfect storm to totally screw up his his free agency, and I think it sucks. I also think that um, maybe my um, you know how like we we've talked in times like if like teams hired an analyst and they just paid them to work like two days a year just to be on like a free agency day to say don't sign that deal and save yourself six million dollars and then you, know, you pay me one million dollars and it's worth it. That's one way of approaching it. I think what I should have done is become that, but for players who are free agents because I really feel like I could have gotten Devonte Smith Pelly like eight million dollars you know, a couple of years ago and instead, yeah, probably. and instead he got, you know, bought out like, or not bought out, but you know, like, you know, eventually terminated. Like I was like, Devante, let's, let's go to who was going to sign up. Probably like the flames. Right. Yeah. 
Also, uh, I hope no one goes through the podcast archives because I think I said Vancouver's going to suck for like five years. And Vancouver's <laughs> Vancouver's really good. Like Elias Pedersen's amazing. And obviously, like East Coast bias, I can't stay up late anymore. So I miss those games. Yeah, you're right. I'm wrong. I'm an idiot. Uh, that's all I want to talk about in the podcast. I definitely don't want to talk about the Dallas Stars, uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. Did you did you pick the Stars or the Knights to win that series? I, I picked Vegas. Me too, yeah. And I thought it was going to be a stomp, a stomping. And I was completely wrong. Uh, so like it was I, I think it was like a PDO thing like I think Anton Kudobin who is the Russian machine who, who guess, called him that was it, was it Se- did Sagan call him that or I know it was whoever had their award previously I haven't looked too enough into it to what, remember off the top of what my do head, they do a, a cowboy cool. hat what do they do in, in Dallas it, it looked like like a chain that they wear around their neck Um. so you and I are talking just for you and me but for like everyone else's sake we're talking about like every team has like you know, for the caps it used to be a hard hat for a while it was like a, a a a nats hat it's like the thing that you give to like the toughest player of the game the you know it's like a post game ritual and so apparently they have a chain that they hand around and they gave it to dobby uh for being their russian machine cuz he absolutely i mean he stole that series as far as i'm concerned 95% yeah. saving during during 5 on 5 across 5 games is awesome uh, you love seeing a backup goalie do that too. You know what I mean? Like it's just awesome. What a gr- so fun. What a great like postseason it's been for that stuff. Like you've seen a bunch of. Yeah. I mean, like uh, uh, the Avs lost all of their goalies. You know, like like they had they had t- like tons of backup problems. There have been injuries everywhere, and there were like guys coming out of nowhere to, uh, you know, geez, I can't remember anything anymore. But like the Blues dude had like a seventy. The backup goalie for the Blues had like a seventy game, uh, seventy save loss. You know, in the in the yeah, in the Demko. Uh, sure, I don't can't remember. Thatcher but, Demko. But, I, I I only remember him because there's WWE's uh, Thatcher, um, and and I always played his theme whenever they were talking about him on TV. Yeah, thanks for bringing. Uh, I, yeah, you, you know this relates back to Braden Holpe. You should never pay a goalie a lot of money. Definitely not when they're thirty. Like uh yeah uh, uh Mark Andre Fleury has kind of been a, a mess in that respect. I, um Robin Lander, poor Robin Lander. I. I think Robin Leonard is a huge success story as far as I'm concerned, like about like how he's turned things around uh, in, in a bunch of different ways. But he's like 29 years old and put up an awesome postseason. It's just that his team was shooting four percent like he absolutely should have been going to the the cup finals if the the team in front of him. You know, if like Max Max Petschi already kept scoring, which he definitely did not. Um, anyway, I think that's everything. Yeah, I mean, it's- yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun. It's been, you know, I was worried that there'd either be a covid outbreak or. You know, two teams had to quit, and you know it's been it's been pretty normal for a postseason in the NHL. Kind of random. Did the Blues Some guys never- did so? The bubble's been clean, uh, or like free of of coronavirus. But the Blues were pretty much decimated by it because of their return to play. Uh, like, yes, the the bubble's been a huge success, and the games have been pretty high quality. Um, some of the series have been yeah. pretty brutal. I didn't love like Islanders Flyers, um, but uh, I, it's been a blast watching the Bolts just punish Barry Trotz, just booming their yes. their brains out every night. I love it. Uh, that should be ending tonight. So by the time people are are listening, those are watching this, uh, Barry should be eliminated. Uh, Thank God. Yeah. Uh, God, if you want a Stanley Cup with them, it would just be the worst I, we would be the be just ones. from our commenters yes oh we get oh everything would be we should i mean I, people like people even do it in like a nice way but like phil was in the in the uh patreon comments earlier being like yeah that uh like but they're paying labs now basis where they should have paid barry two years ago and even i like i'm you know was anti-paying barry back then and i could totally see his point i understand that it wasn't purely about yeah. money like that like you you wrote about this a bunch of times but like barry was a uh What's the word? Dead lame duck. I was gonna say dead fish, but that doesn't make any sense. He was a lame duck from the beginning of that I season. I like dead fish. Let's, yeah, go with go with dead fish though. I like that more. All right. Um, <laughs> In Soviet Russia, we call it dead fish. <laughs> no, I know. I know what you're talking about. It's just like um, when you when you look at it now, it's just you're just like, well, why don't they pay him? But you know, we we all remember all the problems. I mean, at least I do. Um, and it's you know. It's really just it's, an aberration. I guess. It, like, I as soon as um, when they like blew one he of those, he didn't want to come back. No, he didn't. 
uh, when they blew one of those that, games I late. That's what people missed. Well, he had the deal. Like he was contractually obligated to come back, and they actually had to release him from. No, sorry, he had to request release from the deal because he had already pre-negotiated what he would come back at. And he was like, what if we pretended I wasn't contractually obligated to come back at this price? And instead, you pay me this other number that I have absolutely no leverage to compel over you. Yes, that's that's the part that people never talk about. Barry did not want to come back because he was mad at the team because he was almost fired three times. And I think he felt disrespected that he wanted cup uh, and about, wasn't going to get a pay raise or he was going to get like a tiny yeah, pay raise. I, well, all year there, everybody was talking about how Todd Reardon was going to take over the team and he was the guy in waiting. And I think, you know. You know, it was a lot of stuff in the media, and I would, I would hate like, that too. I, I just don't want to come back. Yeah, no. If if Chris Cerullo, everyone was acting like, don't talk to Peter. Chris Cerullo is going to be in charge here in a couple of weeks. Like, I'd be like, you know, I would get cranky too. So, uh, uh, okay. The blog would be so much better though. An argument. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and talking about Baja Blast, he would be as negative towards Baja Blast as I am towards, uh, who's that? Who's that pitcher? I don't like. Who's that pitcher I don't like? Kurt Schilling. Kurt Schilling. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I was pulling that out of my butt. I don't know. <laughs> no, that was, it was Kurt Schilling. Yes. It was. Absolutely was. Really? Yes. Oh, my God. I know you so well now. <laughs> All right. After 10 years. Uh, 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 tech glitches aside, I think this was a, a wonderful conversation. I actually feel way better about this now than I did 24 hours ago. Like, I feel like, you know, the Caps have uh, progress to make, right? Like, up until now, they were just sort of like wallowing in the wake of their elimination. Now they've got Laviolette. They they probably are already building like a free agency plan. They're going to have some cap space to play with. Obviously, it, there's going to be some short term. That's going to be some short term money because they're going to start paying Ovechkin next year uh, on like whatever his you know last deal will be when it's going to be a pretty big ass number. But like we could see nine to twelve. Yeah, yeah. like it's going to be a big deal. Uh, so I think I think we're going to see the Caps making some moves pretty soon. I don't think they're going to trade Kuznetsov. That's a topic we didn't talk about today, but maybe we could talk about that next time. No, I don't want to. Oh, but you know what? They, really they also could trade someone like Michael Kempney. You know, I think that he talked about the draft and, and possibly doing something in an argument. Uh, I mean, an interview with uh, Vogue. So that could oh, be. Oh, I did not. That could be really did not watch the Vogue's one. Uh, and it was weird. Remember, like, I was. Uh, Jensen's review was today, and I like I looked back and I was like, do you remember when they were talking about trading Jensen before the deadline? And then he was yeah. like their best defenseman down the stretch? Yeah. Oh my God, he, I, I, you know what? I swear to God, I think he read your stories about his offense, realized it was a problem, and then changed. I, I swear to God, it seems like that to me. Maybe, like he, he turned into a different player, like down the stretch, and I love that new player. Yeah, and uh, he, he had some good uh, like chemistry, even with Kempney. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I think interesting stuff to have next year. Ferrari. Getting uh, a longer look. I know you're a big fair of our believer. Yeah. Really hard name to pronounce, but a good hockey player. Um, that's it. We'll 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 talk about trade Kuznetsov next time. So uh, okay, that's great. If you want to talk about trade Kuznetsov, uh, start that up in the comments, and we'll we'll have it out later. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Ian. Bye. Bye. -bye.